Okay, Universe, uh, welcome back to another comic review from another comic that was given to us by our good friend on the channel, uh, Mount Vernon Kid. Chris, hope you're watching, and uh, thank you again for the contribution. And I'm going to be reviewing a Marvel comic that y'all, even I, slept on. And guys, I feel bad that I slept on this book because this was really good. Uh, Chris sent me this, and I had never, I didn't even realize it was a thing. Actually, I did know it was a thing. I just never read the comics because this actually kind of spins out of Original Sin. Um, basically what this is, is Deathlock. Um, now you guys remember, if you guys don't know who Deathlock is, Deathlock was a character that came out in the, in the big Marvel boom of 90s with big guns and what have you. And it was a character named Michael Collins who was, uh, turned into a cyborg by a mysterious company. This time around, it's a different Deathlock. This one is a man named Henry Hayes, who, after um, while in Afghanistan and wounded as a combat medic, he was taken in by a group called Biotech, and while they gave him a new leg, they also implanted cybernetics and turned him into a Deathlock for them to use as a private assassin. So, yeah, this comic is only two volumes long, about ten issues, same as Jin Rise, and I'm going to do a full review on the full series, because, again, it's only ten issues, so I'll just do a full-on review, but I'm not going to spoil stuff in here uh, for you guys. So, basically what this is, is a comic that centers around the character of Henry Hayes, who, by the way, Henry Hayes is a very likable character. Here's a guy who was just trying to save the world. He was just trying to be good, um, trying to protect everyone, and now, the, the thing with him is, as, a Deathlock, as this version of Deathlock is that Biotech essentially wipes his memory every time he is uh, after a mission. So he doesn't even know that he is Deathlock. He doesn't know that he is a, you know, a super weapon that goes around leaving no witnesses. And when I say no witnesses, I mean no witnesses for anyone uh, around. He essentially just wipes out everyone um, he sees while on a mission. Um, the, the character is very likable. He's a single father trying to raise a daughter who is, uh, you know, more essentially becoming distant and, you know, more, like, ashamed of him because she, he's never around and he feels awful about it because, yeah, he thinks he's off doing good for the world, but really he's just a cybernetic assassin out to destroy everything in his path. Meanwhile, um, S.H.I.E.L.D. is on the trail for, the, for Deathlock and... Uh, they believe they can get help from Michael Collins, who was the original Deathlock. And, not only that, we have AIM, who sends Domino uh, after uh, Deathlock as well. So you've got, you know, everyone hunting Deathlock, Michael Collins, you know, you've got S.H.I.E.L.D., Michael Collins, the original Deathlock, and you've got uh, Domino and AIM, and you've got this group Biotech. This is a great little espionage series. How Chris told me about this comic from Nathan Edmondson uh, he basically told me it's like Jason Bourne if it was in the Marvel Universe. And honestly, I believe it. This is very much like a Jason... If you love the Bourne movies or something along those lines, you're going to love this. Because this is very much you know, um, reminiscent of those stories. And guys, while I've read Nathan Edmondson work in the past, this dude is an underrated writer. Because this only lasted ten issues, but it felt like there could have been more to it. But it still feels like its own thing. Like, it, you could still read this, and it doesn't feel like it leaves off... Well, it does leave on some stuff, but I think Edmondson got to do more with it in other comics. But anyway. So, um, yeah, he also wrote uh, Black Widow and a Punisher run that in, centered around Punisher in L.A., which I really want to read his Punisher. I want to... Re after reading this, I really want to read his Black Widow and Punisher books. I absolutely really want to read his Black Widow and Punisher runs. Because those both... If they're anything like this... Yeah, I'm in. I'm definitely in for a good time. I'm certainly in for a damn good time. Uh, yeah, uh, Mike Perkins' artwork is fantastic. I really enjoy it. Uh, it's very fluid. Um, the action sequences are really well done. It does feel like Marvel. You know, honestly, if they're looking for shows for Disney Plus, this is one. Marvel, you really should do a. De I know Deathlock was in Agents of Shield. And it's, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is kind of being its own thing at this point. But really, you know, just focus on, um, just do Deathlock as it's, uh, you know, just do Henry Hayes as Deathlock, you know, and do kind of a retooling, not even focus on the other Deathlock we had in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and just make it its own thing. You know, you can use Michael Collins, who I don't think you used in S.H.I.E.L.D., 
think it was someone else entirely. But anyway, yeah, just focus, do this as a ten-part miniseries. Uh, you know, you're you're doing a lot of big Marvel, you know, stuff that's going to be centered in the MCU directly. So, yeah, Marvel, get on this. Mar uh, you know, Marvel, you really need to get on board uh, and do a Deathlock series centered around Henry Hayes. Um, there's so much espionage in here. There's great action. Um, the characters are all likable. And the group Biotech is really an effed up uh, group. Like, they do something to Hayes' daughter that is like, wow, that was, uh... That was morally questionable. I'm not going to say what they did, but I'm like, yeah, that, that, whoa, what the hell? Um, yeah. I also enjoy Domino in here, even though I feel like Domino doesn't feel like, I guess the writer just wanted to use Domino, because really, she doesn't do much. Um, while I like the character of Domino, she doesn't do really anything. She just finds Michael Collins. That's it. She really just finds Michael Collins... And that's all for, like, you could really replace her with any character and it would be the same. We also have a character named Agent Hope who is on the trail of Hayes' Path of Destruction, and that's really cool. I will say, though, that the artwork does make her look exactly like um, J uh, Hayes' controller, JJ, who looks exactly like Agent Hope. And I wonder if that was an, a plan that Ed Edmondson had, if he was like, that was an idea he was trying to pull off with... Uh, JJ and Hope, um, making them look similar, because yeah, they do look very similar to one another, so it makes me wonder if he had, you know, if Edmondson had more time with this book, makes me wonder if he, um, had something planned for that, because it's very obvious he had something planned for both, um, both characters, um, more in the series, especially with Agent Hope and how the book ends with her, um, it's very obvious he had something very much planned, uh, for, for the two characters. So, yeah, I I really want to go more into detail with this, but I I can't because I don't want to spoil anything for the um for you guys. Um it's only two volumes long. You could definitely f still find uh the the uh two issues. And if you're worried like I said, this is while I did say this is um spinning out of original sin, don't worry. They collect the issue in the first volume, they collect the issue or the story, I should say, that is um, that is the basis for this. So don't worry; it's from an original sin tie-in. So you don't have. So don't worry; you don't have to read original sin, the event, to understand this book. This comes out of an original sin tie-in, and they tell you that story in the, in the volume in the in the first volume. So you'll be totally caught up. You don't need to read original sin. Don't worry about it. You'll, you know, trust me. You'll be able to read this book, no problem. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend it. I know Deathlock is not a character everyone remembers, and if you do remember, you don't remember him fondly because he's, he came out of that 90s era. But trust me, you will really appreciate uh, this, Deathlock ser this Deathlock series. And it's a comic series that I had never read. You know, this, was, uh, this is now like five years old. And I highly enjoyed this, and I really recommend it. I want to thank uh, Chris for once again sending this to me, because this was just completely awesome. And like I said, y'all slept on this. I did too, but don't sleep on this anymore. Do not sleep on Deathlock. Go check this out. If you're a fan of, like, Jason Bourne or John Wick or, you know, Blade Runner, yeah, it's very much Blade Runner meets Jason Bourne. So... That's all you need to know, really. So there you go, guys. Um, there's my review. I want to thank Chris once again for sending us this. And uh, yeah, if you've re if you did read the uh, Deathlock series by Nathan Edmondson, what did you think of it? Just comment below. Let let us know in the comments below. And as always, hope you all enjoyed this. And also, again, if you're new here, remember to Hulk smash that subscribe button and be a part of Earth's My Subscribers. As always, I also want to remember everyone that our giveaway is still going on. If you don't know what that is, uh, go check a few videos back for our giveaway of uh, Detective Comics number 1000. Uh, follow the instructions on that video and you can have a chance to win a variant issue of Detective Comics number 1000 and possibly win a PX exclusive of The Batman Who Laughs, one of the characters from Dark Knight's Metal. But uh, yeah, like I said, just go back and check, that, uh, check out that video for further instructions on how to get that. And uh, once again, hope you all enjoyed this, and we will see you right here once more in the universe.